Go ahead, Nate. Hey, how has uh, how has PJ evolved over the last couple of years? Man, P came in with a, a great level of talent, and you know it was, it was obvious that you know he was he's a good player, and but now it's uh, he he's really taking the steps. You know, as you get older, you kind of like your focus is more on perfecting the little things. And that's what that's what P is doing now. He's really taking this game and he's trying to trying to uh, perfect the little things, like hand, like our hand placement, uh, first step, second step, bringing your feet on contact, just the little things. Like he's a lot more uh, comfortable um, on the field, just because it's just how it goes. You just you see things, you know where when things are coming. You play anticipated football. Um, PJ is very smart. He's very smart on the field. He takes very great uh, pre-snap reads, um, and he makes plays. As we can see, I'm saying he's, he's a great player, and this uh, I'm glad I get to play, I'm glad I get to play next to him. I'm glad he's uh, he's one of my uh, one of my teammates. You know, P is very uh, he's definitely he, he's taking the uh, the steps that are necessary for him to. Reach his his uh his uh as hot his potential. Go ahead, Nate again. And then, and then uh, just based on what you just said, I'm I'm just curious now that you're you're an older guy yourself. You've been around. PJ's been around. Uh, what it what you think when you watch the younger guys, right? So like the early enrollees in January, um, uh, and Kazaya, like what. What what is it like to watch them kind of feel their way through it? Um, it's just a lot. It's a, mainly it's a lot of self reflection because I'm like I used to do that exact same thing, and it's uh, the the great thing is with our young guys is that you know we let them know very early like you're stepping into a whole new world like this is not easy at all by any means so don't be afraid to mess up you know like this is where I practice this is what practice is for is for you know making mistakes, learning from the mistakes, and then not making those mistakes again. So we let them know, you know, nobody's nobody nobody in this room came in here and was just off the chain immediately. Like, you know, it's it's it t- everything takes time. Um and it's like so like I said, it's like a lot of self reflection. It's like, well how can I help how can I help him not make those mistakes anymore? Because the quicker that those mistakes are eliminated the quicker he's gonna get on the field, and it's just like we just try to we try to bring them all along. We try to get them early, get all the stupid stuff out of the system, and we're like, all right, now just just come on, like just just follow us, and we'll all be okay. And that's how the that's how the room stays at a certain uh, you know stays at a certain standard. Go ahead, Sean. I had a different question, but following up on that, are there are there mistakes that you have to let them learn through? I like that that you left a, you have to let them make. I mean, it's just kind of like you went through it. You, you can, I guess, warn them about certain things, but there's certain things that you just can't see coming. Are there there are mistakes that you have to make them learn? Is there anything that you went through like that? Yeah, there it, there definitely are mistakes that you have to let them uh, learn and figure out by themselves, because majority of the time when you come in here, it's like, well, I was the biggest guy, I was the fastest guy, I was the strongest guy in high school. So it's like, to an extent, you could just run around people or just throw people around. But now, you don't have that option. Like, because the person that you're playing with, he was the best too. And so was the guy next to him, and the guy next to him, and the guy next to him. And so it's, it's, it's cer- those little certain things, like mentality things, I think I would say, or like the, the pure physicality of the game. Cause I'll never forget my first time ever, um, like getting called out, like an individual competition, Connor McGovern dumped me. It was the craziest <laughs> thing. Cause that never happened to me before. Like, I was like, what, what, what is, what was going on? So it's just it's how early thing was in your process. It was my first camp. It was, it was like the first day of camp. When I got, I went out, I went in there with all types of confidence. I'm like, yeah, I want to smoke. Like this country boy, he don't know who I am. Nope, got served immediately. But it was, it was a, it was a good lesson to learn early. You know what I mean? 
Don, go ahead again. Oh, I, I it, does Nate have a follow up on this subject? Because this is a pretty good subject. I know he was talking about that. Go ahead, Nate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, Antonio, if you uh, just generally speaking, is that was that unique to you having that confidence, or do you feel like those young guys come in with that demeanor? Like, do you kind of have to come in with that demeanor that you're you're confident, or, or is there, you know, do some guys come in humble? I guess. I mean, I don't necessarily. I don't necessarily think being confident in yourself is not being humble. I just, I just thought I was just excited in the moment because I was. I mean, I'm sure everybody knows like my my backstory, my recruiting story, like. Hey, I was my high school team wasn't good at all by any means, so I'm like cool, like I'm here, I'm at Penn State, like major division one program. I'm like, this was the goal. Now I'm saying we're here, so I'm like, I must be doing something right. I was like, I guess I belong here. Now it's time to show everybody I belong here. So um I mean of course, I mean you can't you can't be a confident person with like you have to be confident in order to play the sport, the game of football. If you don't, it's just it's not gonna work out for you. And I, it's not like I wasn't I wasn't walking around like I was just you know <laughs> like king of the land or something. But like I thought I was, I was like I belong here. So now it's time to show everybody I belong here. And then after it happened, I was like, do I belong here? Like man, that's crazy. <laughs> like I was, I was so messed up. I'll never forget that. But I mean, some some people definitely come in, you know, to. Uh, to rah rah and to all over the place, but usually that gets knocked out by the time you know, like the conditioning tests come up or something, something like that. They usually get, they usually uh gets out of them. But I mean, when it's time to play ball, it's just it's time to play ball. You kind of you have, like you got to switch modes a little bit. Either one of you, whatever you want to follow up. <laughs> Go ahead. How old do you feel in that defensive tackle room? I mean, you got you got a lot of guys in there, and a lot of guys that are freshmen, redshirt freshmen, all that stuff. Dude, I feel like I feel so old. Like I got here when I was wait, hold on. I turned. Did I turn eighteen? No, I turned nineteen my freshman year, and I'm twenty three now. So it's like I just feel I feel like such an old man. <laughs> Like with the whole like you know like with the with the COVID like the whole COVID thing it's like um it was like oh well we can't we can't go out anymore like we can't go any parties and I'm like that's fine like, <laughs> like I didn't do anything anyway like I went like for the past two years I've gone to practice and then I, I've gone home like it was like class practice bed like that was it like I didn't I I, didn't, I don't do anything so I mean it's just it. it, it Part of that, and com- like what comes with that, is me, uh, you know, letting the young guys know, like, I don't know, just kind of trying to get them to develop the good habits. I say that comes with being an older guy at an earlier age. Like I'm always like, like a couple years ago, I wasn't in the in the building really stretching and all that before practice, doing prehab and rehab, just the little things that keep your body up. Like I wasn't hydrating as well, so it's like. Have it, ha- trying to help them, especially because how young they are, because your body really doesn't hurt hurt yet. It's just, you're not uh, like you're not really playing yet, so most of the time. So um, yeah, hold on, I'm sorry, excuse me. <laughs> Part back. Roommates, man. Um. um yeah, just trying to get them to develop the good habits that we have now. Um, so, you know, when they get to the position that, you know, as being an older guy in the room, they pa- they then pass that down. Everything is just really just about the future of the sustaining of the uh, of the standard in the room. Antonio, with that with that in mind, you know, the, the NCAA, like, changed up their eligibility, right? Like, everybody gets a free year this year. Do you – do you anticipate that impacting you at all? And if not, like who who do you think that does impact? My bad. Um, 
um, with the whole with the extra gear thing, I think it's a great it's a good thing for um, for the freshmen to be honest with you because you can like they could coach could put you on the field see if you can play because I think they still got four games before they can redshirt but you can play four games and still redshirt so you can play that um like this year doesn't count regardless so it's like you can play this whole year doesn't count then play that those four games the next year redshirt now you got two like you got two whole years if you need it and then you could come out that next year and that third year going crazy. Um, I think it was it was definitely uh, something that was on my mind as far like when everything was initially came out. Like I was tripping. I was like, "Yo, like I was just gonna affect like my eligibility." Um, I think it gave it gave like the fifth year seniors a little bit of peace of mind. Um, so it's actually, I think it, it benefited everybody, but I really think um, out of everybody, the most it benefited the the older guys in the room and the uh, the freshmen. Do, do you think anybody? I mean, I, I I don't know. Like, I guess just you talking about like how how old you feel and how you've been around for so long. Like, do you feel? Do you think anybody wants a sixth year? Like, is that realistic? I don't know. I don't know. I think that's all. That's all up to the individual. Um, it's, it's all it's a it's a case by case thing, but I definitely think that we're all thankful for the fact that you know at least we have that option. Yep. Like if you need it, you can take it, and I think this and we're all just you know it was like a like a sigh of relief. Well, on that note, how do you, how do you balance that with NFL aspirations? Because obviously, you know, you're thinking if you have a sixth year, that's great, but you obviously want to play in the NFL, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, a lot of people are um, strictly focused on the NFL, which is completely understandable. Um, most people who are in my position are like, just being on a fifth year concerned about the NFL, which makes sense. But I also want to uh, uh, get the most out of, you know, college as well to put myself – into the best position that I could be in to, uh, you know, to have a long career in the NFL. So it's like we had we had a um, we had a meeting with um, somebody who works in uh, like all the guys that are draft eligible. We had a meeting with uh, somebody who has NFL experience, and he shared with us the numbers of like the breakdown of just the money alone between like the, and like all the discrepancies between the rounds, like between first and second, isn't that deep. And then like, once you get from like second to third and then third to fourth and then, and then, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's, it's a lot. It's uh, like the fall off is just crazy as far as the money goes. So I would rather, I mean, I would rather be in a position to, have another chance to, uh, if I need it, to prove myself that, uh, like, to to NFL teams, like, I'm somebody that, you know what I'm saying, you want on your team. I'd rather have that option than, uh, than no option at all. You know what I mean? Go ahead, John. Hey, thanks, John. Hey, hey Antonio. Hey, I'm, I'm guessing you've already covered this. I'm jumping in late. But if you don't mind, can you just kind of, you know, discuss how meaningful is it to you to have the opportunity to play during your senior year? And if the season would have got shifted to the spring, would you have like stuck around and played in the spring or did you not even get that far in kind of thinking about what might happen? Um, I mean, you know, obviously wanting to, you know, finish things out uh, the right way was very important uh, to me. And I think it was to all the seniors just because we've seen four other classes before us, you know, finish it out the right way. Um, so, you know, very, I'm very, very thankful that, you know, I get, we got, we're getting the chance to play regardless of when it was, even if it, even if it was in the spring, it's just like, okay, well, playing football in the spring. Like I, like I personally, I didn't, I didn't really care when we played. I just needed to know that we were playing and when we were playing. And then that was, that was it. Um, that's all I need to know. Go ahead, Sean. 
Uh, apologies if you were asked this before I got here, but John Scott Jr., uh, how do you build a relationship with a position coach during quarantine, and, and what has that been like to experience that shift from Spencer to John Scott? Yeah, man, Coach Scott, uh, coach Scott is a very, very good coach. He's a very, very good coach. Um, and I know, you know, uh, our room is very uh, associated with Spence just because he's such a polarizing figure. Um, you know, he recruited – uh, all of us that are in the room right now. And, uh, you know, I mean, obviously it was, it, we, we did, we, we hated to see him go, but we are happy that, you know, he had the opportunity to, you know, go into the professional realm. Um, but coach Franklin wasn't going to bring somebody in who, you know, wasn't a, a good coach. I mean, that just, that just, that's just, you know, basic, uh, but Coach Scott is a very, very good coach. He's very technical about um, about the little things, like the very, the little, little details. Um, he brings a lot of experience. He has NFL experience as well. Um, he had a first-round uh, draft pick last year out of South Carolina. Um, coach Scott's a very good coach. He's very cool. Uh, getting to know him really wasn't that difficult. He was very open with us from the start. Um, you know, initially it's a little bit of a transition period because, you know, you're trying to really figure out what type of personality he has. He's trying to figure out what personalities we have. You know, it's, and it, it's just a lot going on, but we all we all got it figured out. Um, me and him, like, we had we had a couple conversations just about, like, you know, as an older guy, how does the room work? And, like, you know, what is just what he, what he needs from me? And he asked me what I needed from him. So... As a senior, my job was to just try to make his transition as seamless as possible. So the only thing he really has to focus on is coaching us and us getting better. Go ahead, Nate. I, I don't know how much you're watching um, when you're when you're not repping, but what what do you think of how um, Judge and uh, Akeem have looked uh, so far? And man, Akeem Akeem has come. Keem, Keem is doing a very good job, a, an extremely good job right now. Keem is – he's very uh, – he's very, very similar to, uh, to Kev, to Kevin Givens. He's um, he's a little bit lighter than Kev was, but Keem is quick off the ball, he's strong. He's got, uh, he's got very uh, precise and quick hands. Um, and Judge, Judge is just – Judge is doing very good as well. Um, he's he's right now he's just working on perfecting the little things, um, and just taking the coaching points that Coach Scott gives him. Um, he's taking the coaching very very well. He's definitely taking steps as well, uh, steps forward, you know, to help us out and you know, things like that. Donnie, you got a quick one, thirty seconds. Yeah, uh, Antonio, what does what does Fred Hansard mean to you guys as, as a group, not just as a as a as a personality, but as a player? Man, Fred is just Fred is reliable, and Fred is there when you need him to be. You know, Fred brings the juice as well. He's very consistent. He can stuff the run. He can rush the quarterback. You know, Fred is just as much of an important piece as the rest of us are.